I'm going to preface this video with a rant about college, so if you're not interested in the sport, you just want to see the tech, feel free to fast forward. So I'm currently in the process of speedrunning a cybersecurity degree with a minor in computer science. Now, this is supposed to be a five-year degree, but I'm doing it in three years, which means I'll be graduating next year at the age of 21, and I'll be getting my master's in computer science. Now as such, from my point of view, and of course this is speaking purely from those that want to get into information technology, cybersecurity, computer science, IS, just working in tech in general, I believe it's worth it to get your degree as fast as possible and get the most out of college that you can. Now, of course, everybody's situation is going to be different in regards to going to college. Not everyone can afford it. Not everyone can go to it straight out of high school. And I understand that. But I want to address something that I see a lot said on the internet. And that's, of course, this amazing advice that a lot of IT and tech YouTubers have been offering, which is going the so-called cert route. You know, they say, don't go to college. There is nothing to be learned from college. It's not worth it. You know, you don't need college college to get into IT. Now, of course, that is true. But what they really mean by the cert route is the IT help desk route. Because if you rack up all these certifications, say Network Plus, CCNA, but you have no college degree and likely no experience working in IT, you're going to have to start with an IT help desk job. And the idea is, is you get this IT help desk job and you get promoted up to higher positions with certifications if you're demonstrating the fact that you have this kind of knowledge. However, the reality is not every company is going to have a hierarchy for you to climb. If all you have is a few years of IT help desk experience and the certifications on your belts, you're not going to get a network architect job. You're not going to get a network security, cyber. Companies won't even let you touch their servers. Okay, It's very difficult in an uphill battle to secure this kind of position. Now, one might say, look, college degrees are no different. You know, you can get a college degree, have no experience, you'll never find a job, right? Now, of course, I know a lot of this comes from the fact that college in general is less and less seen as something worthy by people of this generation. And that's for very valid reasons, of course, given the state of the economy and even the curriculum of most colleges. Matter of fact, most curriculum actually, unless, you know, of course, you're like in an Ivy League school, is going to be very similar from college to college across the United States, at least. And it lacks a lot of important skills, concepts, and even foundations that are necessary for being an expert in your field and being viable in today's highly, highly competitive workplace. And so, of course, if you have a lot of skills, if you have a lot of knowledge, and you can prove it for your projects, and you have a degree, you're going to be put out of position far better than somebody that does not have a degree. So yeah, I just had to get that out of the way because I know people are going to ask me what I think about college. And they're going to make snarky remarks about college is a waste of money and I'm wasting my time. I get the most out of everything, so I know it's worth it for me. And uh, here I am posted at the library. I got my bag here. So I'm carrying two laptops with me today. This first one is the ThinkPad, of course, you've seen it in my last video. This is the one I got arch booted on. There's the grub menu. The bag I use is the Samsonite bag. I have this little book. I even made a table of contents inside of it. Here's a better look at the notebook. Got the table of contents. Of course, it's not up to date at all. We got notes on IP, DNS, or poisoning, TCP, HTTP, SQL, and the SF console. Some PowerShell and some python and some more arch I have some c methods it's a ring notebook it even has a latch on it it's nice and secure this library just got this new imac which is good because i prefer unix to windows any day now it's rust However, that's not all. I still have a second laptop in here. I've also been daily driving it. I used it for quite a while when I got bored of Ubuntu Mate, which is what I had on this one before. And what I liked about this laptop was that I was able to virtualize and have a lot of VMs on it, including Kali. But now I was just running Fedora locally. Fedora Mate, that is. 
Got us a GTX 1050 Max Q. I got it in 2019. Here's the login screen. Shout out to everyone I can guess where I got the, what this reference is. And even though it's using Mate, I still have some i3 binds just from muscle memory. Like my terminal opens with hotkey and enter. There we go. And I can have DeepSeek pulled up here even locally. And the problem with this laptop is that it dies pretty much instantly. It has about 25% battery retention of what it originally had. So it dies pretty much instantly. I have to have it plugged in, which is why I don't really use it anymore. But here's fast fetch with Facebook pulled up. Facebook OS. Again, I use Mate because it's like a mix of GNOME too, and it kind of feels old school. So about the ThinkPad, it's a ThinkPad T420. I upgraded the hard drive to a one terabyte SSD, and it's currently running Arch with an i3, which is a tiling window manager. That's for the desktop environment. If you want more on that, go check out my last video. I, of course, don't encourage academic dishonesty. That kind of goes without saying. But a lot of college students do enjoy using artificial intelligence to boost them on certain assignments. And I'm no outlier in this. It's fairly reasonable to use AI for double-checking certain things or using it to learn. And one big problem with the current AI models like OpenAI is that it's all done through a server, which means that it's not very good for your privacy. As in, the OpenAI servers are able to log every single request that you send them. And DeepSeek is no different, except it's in Chinese servers. Now, from one point of view, of course, you are one of billions of people that China has data on. But simply if you want more privacy or convenience with open source AI models, I highly recommend downloading the DeepSeek AI model. This is actually a preview of my next video. You're able to run a lot of these models on very low VRAM. So, so my next video, I'll be testing, I'll be showing you guys like an IQ benchmark of DeepSeek R1 on 7 billion parameters using a 4 gigabytes graphics card compared to 14 billion parameters on a 12 gigabyte video card. But if you want to go ahead and install it, just head down to the link down in the description, olama.com, and go to the DeepSeek R1 model. If you're running Linux, paste it into your terminal, otherwise you can download Olama from the Windows EXE file, I believe, or whatever they have for Windows. So it's a simple curl command, easy as that. And from there, you can deep seek and ask away all you like. Now, since I made this whole video for my viewers, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a bit interesting, so I'm not done yet. I might as well make this video worthwhile and talk about the curriculum I've had so far, specifically the tech classes. So I'm only gonna talk about the IT and tech classes and not show the other courses. I guess I'll do that when I graduate a year from now. I'll make a full documentary on the whole path. Fundamentals of Infotech. Now this was a very simple entry-level class. Didn't learn a lot from it. Probably least attentive I ever was. It was mostly about just talking about basic IT topics like servers, clients, different services you run on servers, different use cases, different technology and that kind of stuff. Next there is computer networking. This is actually a very worthwhile class. So was, we learned about subnetting, IP addressing, routing protocols, TCP IP, UDP, how DNS servers work, ICMP, and the different networking layers, of course, all the way from application to physical. Computer programming one was a basic Java course. We didn't even get up to classes or objects. And yeah, we just kind of learned how to script. Now, the highlight of the class was the professor talked about tactical hentai and were a furry tale. And the fundamentals of web development covered exactly that. Basics of web development, so HTML and CSS, and basic web server hosting. Second semester, things got a little bit more exciting. So system administration was taught by a very qualified, dope guy. I still talk to this professor a lot, actually. Definitely one of my favorites. I covered all the important topics within Linux and some bit of Windows in terms of system and server administration. Most of the stuff was kind of basic. We went over SMB, Apache, and you know, basic commands within Linux. So it was kind of a breeze for me, but I enjoyed talking about it. We went into a lot more theoretical things and it was very discussion oriented. So that was a lot of fun. Network infrastructure management and actually database manager one were both taught by adjunct professors. That being said, network infrastructure management went over Cisco routing and went deeper into different routing protocols, as well as subnetting, calculating sitter, basically everything up to Work Plus and some CCNA. We use Cisco Packet Tracer for the different configuring of switches and routers. 
Information security and assurance is essentially everything in security plus in terms of material. So a lot of things with Docker containers, virtualization, encryption, secure shell, some basic penetration testing, SQL injections, certificate authorities, and Wireshark and packet sniffing. So basically everything to teach us the CIA triad and the use of encryption. And database management one covered creating queries in SQL, as well as relational and non-relational databases. All of it was an MS SQL server. Last summer, it's a cloud computing. This is essentially a crash course on Azure. This included Azure PowerShell, creating VNets, storage, web apps and containers, and SQL DB and Cosmos DB. Human computer interaction was a dumb UI UX class. System analysis and design, oh, that was cream at the top. Information systems business class. So every week we had to create loads of different diagrams and hypothesize and create fantasy world project management scenarios, stories. All this class taught me was that I'm sure as shit happy I'm not a business major. Enterprise system admin, we got deeper into system administration. So we created web servers, domains, some bullshit in Active Directory, set up file sharing, Docker, Kubernetes. And for my final projects, I created an email server. DB2 was just the build off of DB1. We got further and deeper into queries, as well as scripting and creating data tables and stores and servers instead of MS SQL server. And network security, we either dicked around in Kali or Active Directory for whatever reason. Mostly setting permissions, setting encryption, and learning about different vulnerabilities. But I've been as kids, so I've already been there, done that. And this is what I'm taking this semester. I'm finally taking classes in computer science, so I can't wait to take the other ones like data structures, software engineering, operating systems, computer systems. I feel like I'm actually learning, and classes are worthwhile. Plus plus and CS1, which I've never done before. Only done a bit of C and computer and network forensics, which is pretty interesting. And of course, they have monitoring and intrusion prevention systems. So I think it should go without saying just doing college curriculum is not enough. If you do that, you're going to be cooked. But you're going to be cooked either way if you only do certs and only do a bit of self-learning, even if you know a lot. So you have to create a fair balance here. Make your own decision at the end of the day for what you want to do. This is probably my first and last video in college for a long time. I'll touch back with you guys when I actually get my degree, and I'll go over these classes and the ones I take until graduation. I really hope I didn't come across as bitter taking certain classes. Obviously, I played everything up to a more dramatic effect for your guys' entertainment, but truthfully, I do really actually enjoy college, and I think it's been a good experience so far. A lot of great opportunities have come of it.